Dr. Banks, call the lab on line 4B. Morning, Jesse. Good morning, Dan. Thanks again so much for the concert last night. I loved it. Oh, sounds like the night air gave you laryngitis. But I like it just as much as you did. Maybe even more. I don't know about that. The laryngitis will clear up by the end of the day, and uh, nobody could have liked it more than I did. Christmas my favorite music, Under the Stars, and a beautiful night. Well, you helped make it that way. Gershwin out of doors is great, but uh, you were the main attraction for me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I do. Oh, morning. Hi. Morning. Has uh, Steve checked in yet? Oh, uh, no, not yet. You two music lovers really missed a great concert in the park last night. Oh. I say music is the best medicine. Soothes the soul. I don't know that anything could soothe us right now, Dan. Yeah, I know. You got a lot on your mind. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. As long as you had a good time, that's what counts. Is Alan in yet? Nobody's due any minute. Gosh, I don't think I should wait. I think I've really got to get up to the clinic. Is there anything I can do? I'll let Steve know that I need to see him the second he walks in these doors. Okay? And tell Alan that I need to see him the minute he arrives. Of course. Okay. Now we're going to Washington tomorrow. Well, what's in Washington? Information about Laura and exactly what she's involved in, we hope. Oh, I wish you good luck. Thanks. Say a prayer. I sure will. I don't know what good my prayers would do, but if there's anything I can do to help. They'll do good. You just say a prayer, too. I gotta go. Um, I tell Alan, if you want to, that Tim, um, I need to talk to him about maybe taking over the clinic for me for a couple of days. Right. Have a good day, all. Hey, you better call me. Of course I'm gonna call you. You try and have a good day yourself. Well, guess I better get to work. I'll be sure to tell Steve. You uh, take it easy, Rick. Everything's going to work out fine. As long as we get some cold hard facts about Laura, yeah. Thanks, Steve. Boy, those two have had a time of it. No telling where it's going to end. Well, duty calls. Thank God for Gershwin. Right. And Jesse? Oh, how's our number one volunteer this morning? Oh, things are great with me, thanks. But have you seen Rick? Oh, you just missed him. Did he seem okay to you? Well, he seemed very preoccupied. He has a lot on his mind. I know. I'm really worried about him, Jesse. This morning he barely said a word and didn't even drink his tea. You can't blame him. He's sick with worry about Laura. Yeah, we all are. Honey, get I'm not going to have to say Thank to convince you. you. I am going to die if I have to stay down here another minute. Now, now, you'll feel better after you have a cup of coffee. Coffee is not going to change anything. Well, perhaps you prefer some juice. Victor, you're not listening to me. I mean, I thought this was some kind of joke when we first got down here. I mean, it's a definitely an incredible place and all that, but we're not even allowed to go out. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yes, I understand how you must feel, but there are valid reasons. Give me one. Security. Against what? Sharks coming up on the beach? They seem to be the only thing within miles of this place. Calm down, Tiffany. Mikos has his reasons. Oh, does he? Not with me. Yes, but you mustn't take it so personally. Oh, no, it's my person that's down here, Victor, that's locked up in this place. I am not spending six weeks of my life locked up underground like some kind of little worm. I'm going to have to talk to him. I'm sorry. He's already given his order, and it is a matter of security. Oh, you know what I think? I think you're just afraid to talk to him. Honestly, Victor, what has happened to you? Ever since we've been down in this subterranean jewel box, you've become a different man. Oh, you're nothing more than his yes man. That is enough! I'll say it's enough. If you're not going to talk to him, I will. I am not going to let him tell me what to do like he tells you. I am not afraid of Miko's Cassidyne or any man for that matter. And I'm damn well going to get up to that beach if I have to blow up this entire place to do it.
find him. I know, love, I know. Let's not panic, all right? But what could have happened to him? Oh, get your coat and get your hat. Hey, breakfast, anyone? Well, where have you been? What have you been doing? Hey, wait a minute. Me, Tarzan, me go get plenty of good num-nums for Jane and... Don't do that to us. Don't bruise the fish, dear. Now, listen, next time you get the urge to go walk about, you tell us, all right? Right. Oh, boy, this is a fine thanks I get for getting up, letting you sleep in, going out, and getting the bacon. All right. Where'd you get that stuff? Well, I got it out in the jungle, and I fished for this in the, the sea. Don't ever do that to me again. Okay, baby. Well, look, I'm rather partial to bananas now that you're back. All right. Take two. They are small. Well, do you know how much you scared me? Do you know how much papaya is a pound in Port Charles? Well, it's impossible to say angry. It is. It's good. We'll save the uh, fish for lunch. Ah. All right. It's good. Yeah. Mm, right. What are you doing? I'm making myself some shorts. This is hardly long pants weather, and you ought to do the same. Why? I'm going to ruin my only pair of pants. Well, you're going to have to do it sooner or later, darling. It's hot out here. Hey, what about uh, all this material you brought? Didn't you make something? Yeah, that's right. I can make something. I've thought about that. Make something real sexy for the jungle, you know? One of those sarong things over one shoulder like Dorothy L'Amour on the road to ruin. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that's to see right. that. There's enough material here. Now, listen, while you guys are getting your full collection together, I think I might go back to the yacht, swim out there. It's not too far away. Get on board. There weren't many people around. Robert, get out a radio Robert, message. Robert, Robert, think. Make some shorts, Tom. What? You're not going to swim to the yacht. If you climb up to the top of the mountain here and you take a look over, you'll see nothing all around the clear blue sea. What? While we were asleep, the yacht sailed off. Come in. Hi, Leslie. Nice to see you. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. And how are you this lovely morning? Goodness, you're in a terrific mood. Yes, I am. Why not? Well, the last time I saw you, you uh, none of my business. <laughs> when has that ever stopped me before? <laughs> you're in a much better mood than you were the last time I saw you. That's right. But I was troubled about a personal problem, and, well, everything's fine now, and I'm sure everything's going to work out just well. I'm glad for you. I hope that's going to be true for me, too. Problems? <sighs> Lots. Let me tell you something. This is the voice of experience talking. Okay. When you have problems, yeah. and you think that everything is lost, yeah. everything has an extraordinary way of working out. Now, tell me what I can do to help you. Oh, yes, that's why I'm here. Uh, would you be an absolute adorable person and take over for me maybe for one day, maybe for two, I don't really know how long, in the clinic. Rick and I have to go to Washington. Laura? <sighs> yeah, I've got to find out what's happened to her, Alan. Um, look, I really do want to help you out. The problem is, I think I have to go to New York myself on business. Oh. Well, if you can't do it, you can do I'm sorry. it. sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Of course, I can do it. I'm sorry I even hesitated. I'll be glad to do it. And I'm sure they won't even be calling me from New York for at least a few days. You sure? Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Don't thank me at all. You just go away to Washington with an easy mind, okay? I wish I could. I wish I could stop worrying for six and a half minutes. I wish I knew what the hell she's gotten herself into this time. Thanks a lot. Would you care for some more coffee, sir? Ah, uh, no, thanks, Albert. Tiffany. Perhaps you should ask her. Uh, Ma'am? Thank you, Albert. Tiffany, how long are you going to maintain this silence? Albert, would you kindly inform Mr. Cassidy that I am not speaking to him? Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, good morning. What a glorious morning. Mind if we join you? you? Oh, of course. Why don't you please sit down? Thank you. My, my, you are an early bird this morning. However, did you manage it, Victor? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, there's so much to see down here. One doesn't want to miss anything. I tell you, waking up in this place is like waking up in the middle of a beautiful dream. Well, I've never seen anything like it. Well, I'm so glad you appreciate it. Appreciate it? How could one not? I must say, Victor, Mikos has incredible style. Imagine creating a beautiful, brilliant, self-sufficient underground environment. It's incredible. It's insane. That's what it is. It's insane. But Tiffany, there's not one ray of sunshine in here. I mean, God only knows how we breathe. 
It's genius, Tiffany, pure genius. Oh, come on, Max. You've seen glass houses and champagne fountains before. Well, you can't be serious. Well, everywhere you look, there's something even more breathtaking. Oh, what with these stalactites back here? I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Not when your freedom is taken away. Freedom? What are you talking about? We are prisoners here. Oh, come now, Tiffany. Well, what do you call it? Come on, we, don't, we can't get out of here. We can't even get any fresh air. Don't you miss that, Max? I mean, I remember how you loved it on the yacht. I find it very comfortable here. Yes, I'm perfectly content. Well, it's just fine for you. I cannot stand being locked up down here, not here or anyplace else. And any way you look at it, it all comes down to the same thing. We are locked up. Well, if you enjoy being prisoners, that's just fine and terrific. I don't. Ah, there's just no reasoning with that girl sometimes. <laughs> Nobody's told her, have they? I beg your pardon. She obviously doesn't know what's going on. And you do? Of course. Everything. Maximilian and I have no secrets. Obviously. And my brother Mikos is aware of this. Not yet. But no problem, Victor. <laughs> I doubt you'll mind. Oh, is that so? You don't know my brother Mikos very well. Do you? <laughs> Do I have a fever? No, you don't. Well, you could have. How could I when I've been chilled out the way I have, you know? You know, you shouldn't even be here in this hospital. And I refuse to come in here and be harassed by you any longer. So from now on, you can take your own temperature. How's it going, Amy? Great. <laughs> you affect all your women that way? Uh, just her. No, it's very hard for her to deal with me. I can understand that. Ah, uh, no. She's just jealous because of all the attention you're getting around here. And I'm here to give you some more. Well, tell me, uh, you got some good news for me? No, not exactly. I just really came by to see how you're doing. Well, according to the lady there, I shouldn't even be here. You shouldn't be in jail, either. I hope you can communicate that to the parole board. Well, I'm trying to. We should be hearing from them any day now. Well, I hope uh, something happens before Doc Hardy has to toss me out of here. And if he does that, we're up Pat? a creek. Oh, excuse me. What are you doing here? I'm a volunteer, remember? But if I'm interrupting anything... No, no, no. Please, come on in. I was, uh, just going anyhow. Look, you don't have to go on my account. I just brought Hutch's wristwatch. Oh, thank you. And you left it in the therapy room. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have it. Uh, I can watch the time fly by. It's kind of nice to see that you two are talking to one another now. Well, look, Joe, I'm a volunteer, and anybody needs my help, well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Okay, is that a new tie? It's real nice. Uh, yeah, it's a new... It's, I didn't figure it out. It, um gift from Heather. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, well, I thought it looked nice with the... Mm -hmm. I gotta go to work, man. Hey, thanks for coming by. Yeah. Bye, Joe. And, uh, thank you, too. I appreciate it. Well, that's okay. I knew it was your watch. Well, thanks, anyway. Listen, uh, Mike's a great kid, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Look forward to seeing him this afternoon. Uh, he won't be there. They, t they cut down on his sessions. Oh. I thought maybe I could fill in for him today, you know, keep you company in the therapy room. Well, that would be great. Uh, watching the guard glare at me all the time doesn't do that much for me, you know? Oh, I don't know how you do it, living under constant guard like that. You think about other things, things that give you lift. People, people that care about you. People like yourself. Come on, if you're ready, I'll lock you down to therapy. You sure this is gonna work? Yeah, I saw it in a movie once. Just take the fish and put it up here in this and a little bit of water. Yeah. And it bakes in the sun. Well, maybe the sun will work like a broiler with it. You think? I don't know. I guess so. 
I just wish they said something in the movie with the, you know, Jane and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. That's how they kept their clothes on. I wish they had a needle and a rest. Well, why don't you just kind of tie a, a knot up there and another little knot around the side or something? Yeah, with my luck, the thing's going to fall off. <gasps> No. Yeah. Oh, what a shame. Oh, oh, come here. Come oh, no. Here, and not your, oh, not all your clothes oh, falling off. Oh, oh not horrible. again. Oh, get that fish out of here. Can't you two leave each other alone for a minute? Oh, our man Friday. <laughs> well, so much for the yacht. But there's a transmission coming from this island. That pulsating sound means something. I just can't pinpoint where the hell it's coming from. Yeah. Listen, speaking of pinpointing things, you know, Robert, what the hell are we doing here, really? You know? No, no, I, I'm... You may as well tell us, you know, as soon as my, my, my head got messed up with the Ice Princess when it first came to Port Charles, and now here we are, ironically enough, dealing with an ice pr the aftermath of an Ice Princess in a tropical sweat box. What, what is Look, it? I told you right from the word go you were messing with something too hot to handle, but you wouldn't listen to me. Well, I, I'm ready to listen now, and I'm bored, so why don't you tell me the story? Okay. It has to do with a weapon. Yes, I know it has to do with a weapon. You told us that. How big is the weapon? Well, I mean, I'm missing details. Why are Laura and I sitting here risking our lives, sweating in our socks, wrapping Spin and Marty in, in leaves, and, and, and wondering what the hell we're doing? Oh, look, funny cheetah had your gift of the English language. Okay, I'll level with you. To start with, there's a byproduct of the Ice Princess that contains energy. Energy far more powerful than the atom. I won't bore you with the chemistry and the physics of it. I've forgotten most of that myself. The important thing to remember is this, this energy. Now, this energy, as you know, as any energy can be, it can be harnessed for either good or evil. Yes, right? so, so that means that the formula yeah, it tells you how to use that energy. No, no, no. Deval created the formula, invented the formula, solely for the manufacture of diamonds. Now, Mikos, he came up with this concept of, of energy, right? My mission, right from the very word go, was not to get the Ice Princess diamond itself, it was to get the formula. Now, the World Security Bureau understand the importance of this formula. But we already have that now. We got one copy of it, love. The Val made two, and the only way we can stop Cassidyne is to get the other one. Now, he may have started manufacturing. He could have even harnessed the energy at this point. He could do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he could do it all right. The trouble is, what he's going to do with this energy and how he's going to harness it. Now, judging by this, this gang of four that he's collected around he's himself... Tony, Max, uh, Victor... Uh, the general. Right, okay. There can be only one thought at the back of his mind. One thought. That is, world control. Yeah. Yeah. It's very possible. Sounds like we got more to do than just find this formula. Absolutely. Our job is to find out what their plans are and what kind of a weapon this guy is going to unleash. But I still think it'd be much better if the two of us asked it. Oh, I quite agree. Good. Uh, you wanted to see me? Oh, yes, thank you. Tony and I want to ask you a question. Oh, what might that be? We heard this rumbling sound a little while ago. Yes, we're curious about it. And what is it? I'm surprised you even have to ask the question. Mm. Nigel's got the plant running to full capacity now. Splendid. That was quick work. Well, what'd you expect? I told you he was perfect for the job. And from now on, you're going to hear that rumbling, as you call it, quite often now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, please, Mikos. There's one other thing I thought you should be aware of. Well, if it's of any importance, I probably already am. What is it? Well, this morning at breakfast, a small incident, really. But it became quite apparent that Maximilian has clued his wife into every aspect of our plan. I do not trust him, Mikos. I mean, what are we going to do about him? First of all, it was very stupid of him to tell his wife women should never be told what's going on until the very last moment. But never mind. She can't interfere with us. Secondly, we are not going to do anything at all about Max. And finally, we're not on board the ship anymore, Anthony. It's my business to decide who we trust and who we don't trust. No, I still believe that he's still the formula. Oh, don't be an idiot. If he took it, why didn't he bolt off with it and with his Kaluga and then start his own private coup? Surely he would have found some way to get away from us before we locked him in here. What you say makes a lot of sense, but there's still one other possibility. Maximilian may plan to make his move after we've completed that plan. 
Well, there's certainly a great deal more sense in that and wisdom than there is in your brother's theory. You see, Anthony, that's a real potential problem. Yours is merely conjecture born of fear. It is not true. The truth is you never value my opinion. You always listen to him. Only to him. Please, Tony, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Mikos always listens to an idea. Well, it's worth listening to. I do not like your attitude. And I don't like wasting time with two quarreling schoolboys. Enough, both of you. Listen to me. This is the last time that we are going to discuss the matter. I trust Maximilian von Stadt. It was my decision to hire him. It was my decision to bring him down here with his wife. And even if he did steal the damn formula, what good will it do him? As I said, I thought... I, I know what you said, and I don't want to hear it again. And I don't believe the man stole it. Because you were not there. No, but I trust my instinct more than your suspicion. It was one of the crew on the yacht, and orders have already been given to take care of that. Now, is there anything else on your minds? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Tiffany, she's very upset that she can't go outside. To hell with Tiffany. Please, Mikos. Can't we allow her to go out for a short while? If we allowed the women to go out for just a little while, things would be a lot more relaxed down here. After all, we're going to spend so much time down here together. You do have a point. But if I did allow Tiffany to go out, she couldn't go now. I've just sent out a patrol. She'll only get in their way. Bloody women. Well, Robert, you trendsetter. Haberdashery by uh, Jungle Fashions here. Very nice. Nuts to you, old boy. Ah. Well, what'd you get to eat? Uh, jungle there. Can I eat them? No, no, no. I'm not going to eat them. What I'm going to do is make Laura some nice, beautiful little bracelets. Oh, she'll love them. I don't want bracelets. Yes, you do. I've even figured out a way how to string them. Really? Uh-huh. This way, Laura, you'll always have some protection. Oh. You see, Robert, tell me if this is going to work. This is the way I figure it. All right. I will take the nut. I will hollow it out. Then I'll take some of the explosive putty. Put it in the nut. Yeah. Thread them around in a bracelet. Yeah. She will then wear it. Wear it, right? Watch out. Hey, that's not bad. Is that going to work? Yeah. Oh, sure. That's terrific. What happens if I fall down? I blow up? No, darling, I wouldn't suggest it if it weren't safe. You see, you on one hand, you'll have the putty, and on the other hand... We'll have the, the, the caps. Look, love, that's the semi right there. Look, sweetheart, this stuff is absolutely harmless, right? You can felt, you can punch it with a hammer. Nothing. Until we insert one of these little caps in it down here. Now, what happens is you insert the cap, you then pull it out, it's automatically electronically charged. Then you throw it, just like a small grenade. Stand back, it's got three times more potency than TNT. That's where I heard something in the brush of it. This way. Just what I've always wanted, a grenade bracelet. Well, darling, don't you understand? The putty is on one hand, the caps are on the other. Yeah. So it, it, it's very safe until you pull off a cap. This way. That's just around this corner. Listen. Cap it down. It's still at it. Get General Hospital will continue in a moment. <laughs>